Imagine waking up in the heart of downtown Tehran, only to find your phone stubbornly insisting that you are strolling the boulevards of Paris. Or perhaps you open your favorite rideshare app, and it places you in the middle of rural Canada, far from the bustling streets you actually inhabit. For millions of Iranians today, this surreal experience is not a software glitch or a momentary hiccup. It is a new, disorienting normal. The culprit? Not an errant update or a faulty smartphone, but a deliberate strategy engineered by their own government. Why would a nation willingly throw its own citizens into navigational chaos? And why is Iran now looking eastward, toward China's Beidou satellite system, in search of a solution? Let's dive deep into the high-stakes world of satellite navigation, a world where geopolitics, technology, and everyday life collide in unexpected ways. In our modern era, satellite navigation is almost as critical as electricity or running water. The Global Positioning System, more commonly known as GPS, has quietly become the invisible backbone of the global economy. It choreographs everything from Uber pickups and food deliveries, to the precise movements of commercial airliners, and even the targeting systems of military drones. The sheer scale is staggering. GPS underpins transactions and operations worth trillions of dollars annually, affecting billions of lives across every continent. But how does this marvel of modern engineering actually work? At its core, GPS relies on a constellation of more than 30 satellites, each orbiting the Earth at an altitude of roughly 20,000 kilometers. Each satellite is equipped with atomic clocks so precise that a miscalculation of even a thousandth of a second can translate into an error of hundreds of kilometers on the ground. Your phone or GPS device receives signals from at least four of these satellites, triangulates the timing, and pinpoints your position with remarkable accuracy, usually within a few meters. This system, however, is not owned by a neutral international body. The United States Department of Defense built GPS in the 1970s for military use. And even though it now provides a free, open service to the world, ultimate control still rests in American hands. This fact has become a source of anxiety for many countries especially those who find themselves at odds with Washington. Dependence on GPS is both a technological marvel and a strategic vulnerability. Iran's unease over GPS is rooted in recent, harrowing experience. Following an intense 12-day conflict with Israel, the Iranian Ministry of Communications officially confirmed what had become painfully clear to millions. The government itself was deliberately jamming GPS signals across vast swaths of the country. Ehsan Chitsaz, the deputy communications minister, candidly told local media that some of the disruptions to the GPS system originate from within the country for military and security purposes. In plain language, Iran was scrambling satellite navigation signals to throw off hostile drones and precision-guided missiles, which often rely upon the same unencrypted GPS channels that guide your average smartphone. This tactic is not without precedent. During times of conflict, militaries around the world have long sought to degrade or spoof enemy navigation. Yet, the scale and persistence of Iran's jamming campaign have few modern parallels. Entire neighborhoods, especially those close to sensitive military or government facilities, simply vanished from digital maps. Residents in central Tehran reported their devices placing them in faraway cities, sometimes as distant as Johannesburg or Toronto. For taxi drivers, couriers, and everyday citizens, navigation became a game of chance. Some drivers reported being sent to the wrong side of the city, while food delivery apps struggled to match orders with actual locations. The results were not just inconvenient, they were economically devastating. Iran's own navigation apps, like Balad and Nishan, were hit particularly hard, as were international favorites such as Waze and Google Maps. Businesses that depended on reliable location data, from ride-hailing services to e-commerce couriers, found themselves floundering. The government admitted that as many as 10 million internet-dependent businesses across the country were affected overnight. According to Chitsaz, filtering and systemic disruption have not only destroyed some businesses, but also created social despair and mistrust. The invisible infrastructure of digital commerce, so carefully built over decades, was suddenly and dramatically undermined. But why take such drastic measures? The answer lies in the evolving nature of warfare. Modern conflicts are increasingly fought in the electromagnetic spectrum where control over communication and navigation signals can determine the outcome of battles. While the most advanced military drones and missiles use encrypted, military-grade GPS signals, 
many reconnaissance drones and older guided munitions still depend on the same unencrypted signals that civilians use. By jamming these, Iran hopes to confuse or misdirect enemy weapons, making it harder for adversaries to strike high-value targets with precision. Yet this strategy comes at a cost. The jamming is not surgical. It is a blunt instrument that affects friend and foe alike. As the frequency of these disruptions rises, Iranian civilians find themselves collateral damage in a shadowy war of signals. The psychological toll should not be understated. As one Tehran resident put it, it is as if you are a ghost in your own city, unseen and unlocatable. Globally, experts are sounding the alarm. Todd Humphreys, a leading satellite security researcher at the University of Texas, warns that GPS spoofing and jamming are now existential threats to critical infrastructure, not just military operations. The vulnerabilities exploited in Iran could easily be mirrored in other countries, whether by state actors or sophisticated criminal networks. Indeed, over the past decade, incidents of GPS interference have surged worldwide, from the Black Sea to Scandinavia and even across parts of North America. So what is Iran's next move? Increasingly, the answer points towards China's Beidou Satellite Navigation System, BOK. Developed over the past two decades, Beidou now boasts a network of more than 40 satellites, offering global coverage and a suite of advanced features. Unlike GPS, which remains fundamentally under U.S. military control, Beidou is a pillar of China's quest for technological independence and global influence. For, for countries eager to escape the gravitational pull of Western technology, Beidou represents both a strategic alternative and a potential lifeline. Negotiations between Tehran and Beijing have intensified, with the integration of Beidou now a central element of their broadening partnership. Alexandra Stickings, a space security analyst at the Royal United Services Institute, observes, Beidou is not just a navigation tool, it is an instrument of Chinese influence, woven into the fabric of China's Belt and Road ambitions. For Iran, aligning with Beidou is as much a geopolitical calculation as a technical upgrade. It signals a pivot away from American-dominated digital infrastructure and toward a multipolar world where new alliances are forged in orbit as much as on Earth. But will Beidou truly solve Iran's navigational headaches? The answer is complicated. On the technical front, Beidou offers several advantages. Its satellites can deliver highly accurate positioning, sometimes within a meter or less and provide encrypted messaging capabilities that are far harder to jam or spoof using traditional electronic warfare. This could make it much more difficult for hostile actors to disrupt Iranian military and civilian operations. The system is already being adopted by dozens of countries across Asia, Africa, and even parts of Europe, embedding China more deeply into the global digital ecosystem. However, deeper reliance on Beidou is not without risks. By integrating its infrastructure with a foreign satellite constellation, Iran potentially opens itself to new forms of surveillance and political leverage. As Alexandra Stickings cautions, Beidou's embrace comes with strings attached. It's about more than just technology. It is about aligning your future to China's vision of the world. In times of crisis, China could theoretically restrict access to certain services or gather intelligence from Iranian usage patterns. The very act of diversifying away from American systems could lead to new forms of dependency. There are also technical uncertainties. No satellite navigation system is immune to electronic warfare. P. Peter Singer, a noted cybersecurity and defense analyst, remarks, The more Iran leans on Beidou, the more it paints a target on itself for new jamming or spoofing campaigns, possibly from adversaries eager to undermine this new connection. If electronic warfare escalates, Iranian civilians could face even more frequent and unpredictable disruptions. The cycle of jamming, spoofing, and countermeasures could spiral making daily life increasingly complex. The implications extend far beyond Iran. The surge in electronic warfare jamming, spoofing, and hacking threatens the very fabric of global commerce and daily life. Consider this. Everything from commercial aviation to international shipping, from emergency response to the humble smartphone in your pocket, relies on uninterrupted access to accurate location and timing data. In the United States, Agencies like the Federal Aviation Administration have begun urging pilots to plan for GPS outages and familiarize themselves with alternative procedures, such as using ground-based radio navigation systems. The Federal Communications Commission is exploring complementary positioning, navigation, and timing technologies to bolster resilience. Even the Department of Defense 
is investing heavily in hardened, jam-resistant systems for military use, while recognizing that civilian infrastructure remains a soft target. The risks are not hypothetical. In recent years, cargo ships in the Black Sea have reported being displaced by hundreds of kilometers on their digital charts, thanks to sophisticated spoofing attacks. In Scandinavia, pilots have lost GPS signals during critical phases of flight, triggering safety alerts and emergency responses. Financial markets, which depend on the nanosecond precision of GPS-based clocks for transaction timing, have raised alarms about the potential for manipulation or catastrophic errors. The cost of a single, well-timed disruption could run into billions of dollars, with cascading effects across the global economy. What lessons can the world draw from Iran's predicament? First and foremost, Resilience is now a strategic imperative. Todd Humphreys and other experts argue that societies must develop backup systems, whether by combining GPS with ground-based radio signals, leveraging multiple satellite constellations, or even deploying new generations of terrestrial positioning networks. Dana Goward, president of the Resilient Navigation and Timing Foundation, puts it bluntly. Do not put all your eggs in one satellite basket. Redundancy is the key to survival in the age of electronic warfare. For businesses, the message is equally urgent. If your company depends on precise navigation, be it in logistics, agriculture, construction, or finance, you must diversify your sources of timing and positioning data. This could mean investing in multi-constellation receivers that can access GPS, Beidou, Russia's GLONASS, and Europe's Galileo system simultaneously. It could mean building relationships with service providers who offer backup solutions, or integrating legacy technologies like Loran for added security. The future belongs to those who can adapt quickly and build in layers of redundancy. Government policy is also evolving. Across the world, regulators are waking up to the reality that satellite navigation is no longer a luxury, but a critical national asset. In the United States, lawmakers are debating new investments in resilient infrastructure, while the European Union is pushing for greater autonomy through its Galileo system. Russia, for its part, has heavily promoted GLONASS, its own global navigation constellation inviting other countries to participate and reduce reliance on Western technology. The proliferation of alternative systems is both a sign of rising geopolitical tension and a hedge against the risks of monopolistic control. Yet the march toward greater resilience is not straightforward. The integration of satellite navigation with other emerging technologies, such as fifth-generation mobile networks and artificial intelligence, introduces new vulnerabilities. As more devices become interconnected, the attack surface grows. A coordinated disruption could, in theory, paralyze entire sectors of the economy or sow chaos in already fragile societies. The line between civilian and military infrastructure is blurring, making it ever more difficult to defend against sophisticated threats. Looking ahead, the alliance between Iran and China on satellite navigation is likely to deepen. Experts like Bruce Bennett of the R&D Corporation interpret Iran's embrace of Beidou as a signal of growing strategic alignment with Beijing. Increased technological cooperation could accelerate the deployment of Beidou-based systems, not only within Iran but across the broader region. This, in turn, could hasten the fragmentation of the global digital commons, as rival blocks coalesce around competing standards and infrastructures. But the story does not end there. While much of the world's attention is focused on the rivalry between GPS and Beidou, there is a crowded sky overhead. Russia's GLONASS system and Europe's Galileo constellation together contribute more than 50 satellites, quietly offering alternatives on every continent. Some experts argue that the real future lies in the proliferation of receivers capable of accessing all four major systems, creating a web of overlapping signals that is far harder to disrupt. Others warn that this very complexity could be exploited by those seeking to spread confusion and chaos. For Iranian citizens, the return to normalcy remains uncertain. The government has signaled that GPS jamming will continue as long as national security threats persist. Taxi drivers, business owners, and ordinary families must adapt to a world where digital certainty has become a luxury. Some have reverted to paper maps or old-fashioned directions. Others share tips on social media for navigating the new digital maze, such as using offline maps or relying on landmarks rather than satellite signals. A sense of improvisation and resilience permeates daily life. As we reflect on these developments, it is worth asking, are we all, in some sense, living on borrowed time to go? The convenience and precision we have come to expect from our digital devices 
are built atop fragile, contested foundations. The experience of Iran offers both a warning and a roadmap. Redundancy, adaptability, and strategic foresight are now essential. Not just for governments and corporations, but for individuals and families everywhere. So will Iran's adoption of Beidou truly resolve its navigation crisis, or merely exchange one set of challenges for another? The reality is complex. Though Beidou may allow Iran to circumvent some vulnerabilities inherent in the United States-based GPS, it also binds the country more closely to China's technological and geopolitical orbit. New threats ranging from sophisticated spoofing and jamming to political leverage from Beijing are already looming. The age of satellite navigation is entering a turbulent new phase, where flexibility and resilience will define both winners and survivors. And here is an intriguing fact that few realize. At any given moment, more than 100 satellites from four separate global navigation constellations, GPS, Beidou, GLONASS, and Galileo, are silently orbiting overhead, weaving an invisible net that holds our world together. Yet, that net is only as strong as our willingness to defend and diversify it. If you found this deep dive into the world of satellite rivalry illuminating, do not forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more stories that decode the future of global technology and economics. What would you do if your phone's map suddenly placed you halfway around the world? Share your thoughts, experiences, and survival tips in the comments below. As always, stay curious.